<clears throat> Hi everyone, um, I am wanting to uh, make a review today of the Jumel uh, Dobsonian Z8. Um, this is an amazing telescope. I know that there's a lot of people out there that are trying to make up their mind between the Orion uh, Sky Tracker or Sky Finder or something um, and this. Um, and basically, I'm going to say that for me, the, uh, the decision was very, very obvious. Uh, this one definitely, first of all, the, the actual specs on the two telescopes are pretty much the same. Um, basically, you, you got um, the same type of, of specs on them. It's just a different um, amount of um, goodies that you get with them. And this one obviously has um, a lot more goodies than the other one does. Uh, first of all, I'll say... This right here is one of the main reasons why I picked this one. This is a uh, this is a collimator, uh, a laser collimator. Um, this is something that is going to make your life a whole lot easier when you're trying to use this because if your telescope is not collimated correctly, um, it can distort the vision of it, the view. Um, it can make it so it's not as crisp of a picture, and um, obviously not see as, as as well as you'd like to see. Um, another thing that you get with this that I uh, that I was very pleased with is this. This is a this is a moon uh, lens, and basically what it's for is you know especially when you get a full moon, you're gonna see that the, uh, that the it's it's very difficult to look at the moon just because it's so bright. Um, I didn't have to use it the first uh, the first couple times because it was just a crescent moon, um, but this is a very good a very good piece. Um, another thing um, you see you, you get. You get two different lenses, okay? You get the 30 millimeter and you get a 9 millimeter. Now, I will say this: the um, after doing quite a bit of uh, looking around, the 9 millimeter is actually the, if not one of the, um, the the closest um, lens. Basically, 9 millimeter just gets you a real close, a real good magnification. Um, I myself, I like to, I, I'm trying to get as close as I possibly can. Um, to something, so if you can get something that's going to be a nine millimeter and still have a crystal clear picture, um, you're doing real well, and that's just what we've got here. Um, this is definitely um, a very, very good piece. Um, I know that when I I took it out for the first time, like I said, this is my first telescope. I, I took a look at the moon, and I actually had to take a step back because I uh, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. And to be honest with you, I actually have something on the way. Um, it's supposed to be here on Wednesday. It's called a Barlow lens. And what a Barlow lens does is it, it, it does a certain amount of multiplication um, of, the, of the magnification that you're seeing. Um, the one that I got was the Teleview. Um, it does it two times. Um, it, du it doubles the magnification. And um, it's, uh, it's, it was 125 bucks on telescopes.com. And um, it seems like that's the one that you really want to get. Um, if you're not trying to spend a lot of money, but you still want something that's good. Because if you double the magnification of something, you want to make sure you got something good. Otherwise, you're going to have issues with the distorted vision. It's not going to be as a crisp of a picture. And it appears as though the Teleview Barlow lens um, does actually keep your image very, very crystal clear. Um, and so basically, that's, that's my, rev my review on this is definitely, um, is definitely a very, very good review. Um, the the eight inch is actually only I think it's only a hundred bucks less than the ten inch and two hundred bucks less than the twelve inch. Um, if you want to go the extra mile, if you got that extra money, um, you can definitely go ahead and get the ten or the twelve inch, and I would highly recommend it. Um, but I am very 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 pleased with this. Um, no complaints here. Um, one thing I'll say is that the um, the video the the, uh, the instructional video of how to put this thing together is very 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 good um, I had no problems putting this together because you're gonna get the base and this um, the actual OTA um, separately and you have to put this together and the video that they have for on telescopes.com that you can also find on YouTube um, is, is very very good um, the only thing that I will say that they don't mention that is very uh, that is very important um, to me anyway that I, I, mean, I believe that it would be in general is that you? Um, they don't tell you when you're putting it on that when you put this bushing on right here, um, the bushing needs to be somewhere in the middle. Um, there's there's like a track where you put this bushing, and you can slide the uh, the whole thing up and down, 
and the bushing needs to be somewhere in the middle. Otherwise, you're going to have too much weight in the front or in the back, and it's going to it's going to end up tilting. Um, so make sure that when you're putting that on, um, in the video, it actually looks like it puts it at the very bottom. And I mean, I guess if you're looking straight up, it might be all right. But if you're having any kind of an angle at all, um, it's going to end up tilting forward on you because there's too much weight in the front. Um, so basically, yeah, that's what that is now. I also actually kind of wanted to do. I, I know that when I was looking for um, when I was looking for the uh, with the telescope that I was going to want, I had to make a decision with the amount of money that I was wanting to spend. Um, I had to make a decision on whether or not I wanted something that was going to be a very, very, very good picture and a very good magnification, um, or I could. And, and, and this is manual. This is all manual. So basically, everything that you're doing is going to be all manual. So you're going to be, you know, moving it yourself. It doesn't sound like it would be. Like, why would you care? Um, but if you're looking, when you look at something in a great magnification, like you do with this, like if you're looking at the moon, the moon's only going to stay in your vision, uh, your field of vision for about, I say, probably about 20 seconds, 25 seconds, um, because it actually does move quite, quite fast, which I wasn't even really thinking about too much um, when I got it. It's not a problem for me. I have no problem using this, but I had to decide between getting something that you're going to use manually and have a better magnification for the money. Um, or you get something that has a go-to motor that you know you can you can set it, set it and forget it. Um, put it you know at the moon, and then it will just follow it as it goes. Um, you can make up your mind on that. I myself, I want a good crystal clear picture, and I want a very good magnification. Um, so I'm very happy with this. Now, basically, also I wanted to. I know that when I was looking at um, at the telescopes, um, when I was looking at um, different well, after I'd already ordered my telescope, after I'd ordered this, um, I was basically trying to find um, a way to, uh, I was just looking for different things on it that, that you don't really think about, like such as how to collimate your uh, telescope, which is very important. One thing I'll say is that I do actually keep, um, on the side here we have a, there's like a, um, like a little shelf where you can set these different things in there. Um, one thing that I actually always keep in there is this, and it's a uh, Phillips head screwdriver because I don't care if I did it just five minutes ago, um, I will, if I move this telescope at all, I will make sure that I collimate this again. Collimating, basically what collimating is, is making sure that the first uh, mirror that you have here is lined up correctly with the big mirror in the back um, because if you don't, it's going to, like I said, it's going to have, it's going to have a distortion in the view. And um, in the front here, in order to be able to collimate it, you have to turn some screws. There's three different screws um, to be able to turn the mirror um, that you loosen and you tighten. And so I always keep this with me just because, like I said, at any given time, if I move the telescope, I will make sure that it's collimated again. Um, just because I want to make sure I'm going to always have the most clear picture, the best picture, and, and the best view. <coughs> um... So actually, I wanted to go over really quickly. Uh, there's more videos on YouTube that go over it in more depth, and you'll be able to see a better picture of how to do this. But I do want to go over real quickly, just because there's really not much to it, how to collimate your, your telescope. First of all, um, if you're getting this particular telescope, you're going to get, um, you're going to get a little adapter here, because um, there's a quarter, one and a quarter inch lens, and then there's a two inch lens there. Um, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your adapter and make sure that everything is securely in place and as, as tight as you can get it um, to make sure that everything is, is going to be um, where it needs to be. So basically, let me show you this. What you want to do actually here, I'll show you this first. There is a side of it that has this. It's, it's, got, a, um, it's got a hole in it on the side. And basically what that is is when you, when you point this in here, it's going to hit this mirror that's right here, um, the first mirror. It's going to bounce down to the second mirror, and it's going to come back, hit this, and it's going to come through, and you should be able to see it right through that hole, and it should be centered in that hole. The light should be centered in that hole. So basically what you want to do is make sure that you point that hole to the back of the telescope because you're going to be, after the first part, you're going to be sitting in the back of the telescope making sure everything's aligned. So point that in the back of the telescope, uh, make sure you tighten it up. Make sure when you tighten it up, you've got a nice, 
you hold it down so it's nice and flat on it because otherwise it can be it can be the culminator itself can cause a problem when you're trying to culminate it. So make sure you have it nice and tight down there. So turn it on. First of all, make sure <coughs> put your hand in front of it. Make sure that it's not missing this mirror at all. So you're not going to be looking down this telescope and having um, get blinding yourself. So basically, you can't really see it. You can kind of see it. you can see the the dot in there. But there's actually a little circle on the back mirror, and you want to make sure that this. And actually, this is perfect right now. You want to make sure that the uh, you want to make sure the um, the laser is actually hitting the center of that circle. So what that's doing is that's making sure that this that this that this mirror right here on the front that's making sure that that is lined up correctly to the back mirror. So then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn it and you're going to want to look at it from this direction. And basically, like I said, you have that hole right there. You have these, um, you have the, the mirror is right here, okay? The mirror is right in the back here. And you have these little screws that you can tighten and loosen with your hands. Um, and that's going to make sure that you move that so that that laser up there um, is hitting the, the, metal, the middle of that hole. Um, so you want to tighten this. One thing I'll say is that I myself... Um, I'm not sure if there's any real adverse effects for doing this. I don't think there is, but there may be. I don't think that there is, though. Um, these right here loosen up your, um, your mirror so that you can't move it with the black ones. Okay, you're supposed to move it with the black ones and loosen it up with the white ones. Thing is, though, is that the white ones, when you move, when you move these, it does affect the mirror itself. So I might, what I like to do is I have these pretty tight, but loose enough, and when I say loose enough, it's still, it's very, very tight. You have these tight, but loose enough so that you don't actually have to loosen them um, when you're trying to culminate the back uh, mirror. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll leave these alone, and I'll use only the black ones, and just, just change it to where it needs to be, and then that way I don't have to worry about tightening these back up and then ruining what I just did with the black ones. Okay? So basically, I mean, that's all there is to it. Once you have that lined up up there, then you know you're good. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do and this is something that they don't mention um, on the video either, is the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that your finder scope is aligned with, uh, with, the, with, the, with the lens, with, the with what you're going to be looking through. And the way that you want to do it, and there's also another thing that I do a little bit differently myself. Um, it's not a bad thing by any means, but I just do it like that to take extra precaution. Um, first of all, what you're going to want to do to line this up because it's not lined up, believe me, it's not lined up when you get it. And in fact, it's not going to be lined up at all every time that you take it out. Every time, every time you take this off, every time, every time you take the uh, finder scope off, when you put it back on, you're going to have a little bit of a difference um, from the last time. So if you ever take it off, you're going to have to realign it. But what you want to do is you want to take your 30 millimeter lens, you want well, whatever kind of scope you got. Um, just take your least powerful um, lens, and what you want to do is you want to, first of all, you want to look at something that's far enough away that you can focus this, and it's going to be a clear picture. So focus the uh, focus the lens on something, and make sure that it's in the center of this of what you're looking at um, through this lens. Make sure it's centered up as much as you can, and it's very focused. Um, once you have it in the center of that, what you're going to want to do then is look through the finder scope and basically make sure that um, you, you can see it on there. Um, and what you're going to want to do is there's two screws on here, okay? There's, there's two screws that um, basically what they do is one of them goes up and down. When you tighten it and you loosen it, it goes up and down, and the other one goes left and right. So what you want to do is make sure that the crosshairs are um, right centered to whatever it is that you've got in here centered up. So you can take either the top of a tree, um, if you know that there's a specific tree, you don't want to do it against a bunch of woods because then you can't tell which one you're looking at and you might have these completely misaligned. But you want to take like a top of a tree or the top of a chimney or a pole or something, just make sure that it's centered up in there. Now what I do that I haven't really seen anybody else showing on videos just because when you're looking at night, when you're looking at stars, if it's not perfectly aligned, you can completely miss what you're looking for. 
And so I like to make, like I said, take extra precautions. What I'll do is I'll take, first of all, you want to get your adapter here, put your one and a quarter lens in there. And what I'll do is I will take the nine millimeter lens, is what I have. You may have a 10 or a 12 or something. Um, but I'll put it in here and I will make sure, again, that I have a very, very good um, focus and make sure that this is lined up with this as much as you can. So I'll go back to it. I'll make sure that I'm looking at the same thing as I was before. I'll look at the, um, you know, the top of the pole or whatever it is. And I'll look through this and I'll make sure it's centered up in this. And this is going to give you a very, very much higher power of magnification. So I'll look through here, make sure that it's all centered up in this eyepiece. And then I'll go back to this. And at that point, it may be a little bit off. It may be just a hair off. But the thing is, though, is that when you're looking for a star, or if you're looking at something particular in the, in the sky, it's like I said, it's very easy to miss when you have this high of a magnification. So what I'll do is I'll just make sure that this is centered up, and then I will make the small adjustments that I need to on here, and then everything's good to go. Um, like I said, any time you take this off, every time you take the finder scope off, um, when you put it back on, you're going to want to realign it because um, all it is is just a screw that you unscrew it and then you slide this off. And when you put it back on, it can be, you know, maybe you just didn't tighten up as much as the last time. Maybe, you know, you tighten up more. So it's very easy to, uh, to, to, to mess that up if you don't. Um, basically, that's my, uh, that's my little video here. I wanted to get you some information that I know you're going to want if you've got one on the way or if you're trying to make up your mind. Um, this is a very, very, very good telescope. It's got great aperture. Um, the light in it, the light source, I mean, it's great for, I mean, and even, I mean, I was at the top of a hill the other day. I was at the top of a hill um, when I was actually lining this up the first time I was using it. And um, it was kind of getting close to where the sun was setting. And I, I basically, I lined it up. And then I looked down and I saw something that was it was a very, very, very long ways away. It was probably about 20 miles away, maybe 15 miles, something like that. And I saw a little glimmer of what I thought was maybe a, a car, you know, from the sun. It was maybe something like that. So I wanted to see how powerful this was. It was the first time I took it out. So I pointed it down. I got the finder scope, pointed down there. And I looked. And 15, probably about 15 miles away, I'm looking. I was. It looked like I was standing about 15 20 feet away from a golfer. It was a golf course. You cannot see it at all from your, with your naked eye. But looking down there, I, I mean, I, I was like, what, what's going on? So I look at it, and yes, it was. It was a golfer. It was a golf course, and it was a golfer. I was, it looked like I was standing like 15 feet away from him, and I was just in awe. I, I was already just in love with this thing because the fact that it could do that just was so, so impressive. I was so astounded by what I was seeing. And uh, this this lookout that I was at, it's a great place to uh, it's a great place to you know pe people are going up there and they'll see you with it and people will always ask you know can I take a look and and, and it just great it's a great conversation starter it really is so whether you're looking for a date or a friend either way um, it's a great it's a great um, addition to whatever you're doing so that's my uh, that's that's my video that's my review definitely a good product amazing product telescopes.com I'm not an affiliate by any means. Um, I just wanted to get you your information. Telescopes.com is an amazing site. Um, I would say they're up there with Amazon. Um, free shipping um, and it's and just great prices for everything. So take this video as whatever you want. Um, but I wanted to make sure you got all the information. Like I said, um, for like if you're wanting more information about columnizing or aligning your finder scope with the actual scope. Um, there are other videos that have more detail where you can see, you know, more, um, more detail of what they're doing. Um, but I still, I mean, there's really not anything more than to it than what I just said. So I hope this has helped you out with either making your decision on what you want to get. Definitely would pick this over the Orion just because, like I said, it has uh, the same the same specs, um, but just more goodies. Um, so um, hope you hope you've uh, enjoyed the, the video, and I hope that you enjoy your telescope if it's on the way. Um, kudos to you and enjoy your uh, enjoy your um, your viewing pleasure so um, see you